What is up guys, welcome back to my channel and to the finale of my first building series called the Siege of Bricks. That's right guys, after 3 months of building the day has finally come that I can present to you the complete and finished mock that we all have been waiting for so long. Containing anywhere between 8 and 10,000 parts and started roughly in the beginning of August, this mock is by far the biggest and the most time consuming build I have made. Not only that, but it was also made as a part of a collaboration build with my friend from the Edge of Bricks channel, so this is something new for me as well. Well, for both of us actually. Now, if you are new to the channel and have no idea what the build is about, don't worry, I'll try to recap the most important things about the entirety of the build series in the beginning of this video. And of course, if you want to learn more details about the build process itself, then you can always check out the previous 4 chapters of this series. I've made a dedicated playlist of the entire series that I will link below so you can catch up if you are new or if you somehow missed any of the episodes. In this video I will try to break down every single element of the build, but also there will be some important information regarding the future of the mock and the channel itself in the outro, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Nevertheless, whether this is your first segment you'll be watching, or you've been here since day one, I would like to thank you all for being a part of this journey. You all inspire and motivate me to get all this stuff done, so thank you once again and I hope I will continue to entertain you further down the line. But now, without further ado, let's dive into today's final episode. So guys, here it is. Here is the build that took me about 3 months, but I am so happy of how it looks in the end. When I was starting this mock, I had a pretty basic idea of what I want to accomplish, but I didn't think it would look so good when finished. The whole idea of the build itself came spontaneously after my friend from the channel Edge of Bricks showed me his working trebuchet. I thought, why not make a collaboration out of it? I wanted to make an exploding wall for some time now, but I didn't have a solid story behind building one. And that's the place where his trebuchet could fit in very well. He agreed that he also wanted to make a little diorama around the weapon, and so the Siege of Bricks was born. He already finished his part of the collab on his channel, so you can check out his final episode following the link below. But this video isn't about the attackers, so let's go back to my part of the build, because there is a lot to cover here. The basic idea is that this is a corner of the defense walls of a medieval city that is situated on a rocky mountain. I think that we should start the tour with the outside part of the build and then we'll switch side and see what's happening on the inside. Because yes, it wouldn't be a true cube brick mark without at least a small glimpse of the interior. So the path here is not the main road going into the city, because bigger wagons would have a big problem going up this steep terrain, but for sure a shorter one for individual people. And that is why you can see a bunch of fierce warriors running down the hill to sabotage the enemy. I made the path using a mix of different types of dark tan wedge blades, while the mountain itself is a mix of dark bluish grey slopes. I used a pretty basic technique to make the rocky mountainside, with little bits of snow detailing here and there. And as we imagine the siege to be taking place at the end of the winter, you can see also small plants that started growing in few places. I wasn't quite sure about the idea that Edge of Bricks had about the siege being in winter, because I never before made a snowy diorama, but I think that I got a quite a hang of the techniques used to represent the snow and I will gladly make some more snowy max in the future. Because I didn't want to cover the wall with trees, but still wanted some bigger parts of foliage, I came up with this bush of mountain pine and what I got is fitting here perfectly. I imagined the right side to be totally inaccessible because of the rocky cliff, but I couldn't leave it without adding some details on the ground. That is why we have some snow laying down on the rocks and a small bush that seems to be a great vantage point for this snowy owl. Now let's go back to the left side because this is where most of the fun is at. Like I said before, I wanted to make a damage wall with an explosion as its main element and that is the part that I am extremely proud of. To give the exploding effect I use a lot of trans orange cheese slopes with a trans red plate background to simulate the inside core of the wall covered in flames and I lit it up with lego power function lights. 
This trans orange rock piece had come in very useful as well, showing the core of the explosion with an addition of few elements from the power burst pack. Around the explosion you can see some flying debris that got ripped off the wall, which I made using various grey elements connected with droid arms and clip bars. And as you can see the siege is far from over because the enemy is still shooting at the city with his artillery. But that doesn't scare the defenders which are charging towards the enemy eager to fight. I decided to put our heroes in the front lines to fully make use of the space I had on the dirt path. The heroes are led by the general who is supported by his right hand officer who is wielding two short swords and they are allied by a viking with a heavy sword and a typical round shield. Next in line is an armored horseman and two knights that are following their lead. Ok now that we've covered the ground melee troops we can check out who is defending the city from above. The first line of defense that catches the eye instantly is of course the ballista. It is my custom design that actually works. It is able to shoot projectiles for more or less 2 meters, so it's not bad for this scale. The mechanism is based on ancient Roman designs that was also used during medieval times. The machine uses two levers with torsion springs that are made by twisting leg ropes, which can throw these slick missiles pretty far. I know many of you are still waiting for the tutorial on the ballista, but don't worry, it's coming sooner or later. The weapon is operated by a single soldier, while a crossbowman is helping with the aim. There is also a second crossbowman patrolling the right side, just to be sure no one is coming from that side. On the left side we have three archers who are firing at the enemy. I really like the design of the bow I made, I just got so bored of the same bows for over 30 years that I had to make something more realistic. I used two brown horn pieces and a small piece of a lego string. And as it turned out, Harry Potter wands can be pretty nice arrows for this kind of design. One thing that I had to make in this castle design are fully functional machiculations. If you don't know the term, these are basically holes under the crenellations that allowed archers either shooting arrows or throwing rocks at the enemy who came too close to the wall. Ok, and since we are already on this side, time to take a closer look at the interior. The top of the wall is lined with wooden logs covered with a little bit of leftover snow and to get some light there are two torches. Coming down the staircase we can already see the design I got here is awesome. I wanted to make the steps thin for one plate and sticking out of the wall and I think that turned out great. The railing is made by connecting brown bars with minifigure hands. <laughs> Sorry Joas. The lower part of the stairs was a bit tricky because there was no wall to attach the stairs to. But I came up with a solution to place the tiles using a row of headlights with clip bars sticking out of them. The floor of the courtyard is covered with tan ingots with a simple yet a very effective pattern. And of course there's the frozen fountain. As I thought when I finished with the slopes I got in the last hole the ice is looking perfect. The medium azure bottom really gets the job done. I've scattered some snow all around the courtyard that has not yet melted which is a neat little detail. Oh, and yeah, Olaf's here too. The wood storage came out pretty nice, but the door is something I especially like. I played around with the textures a little bit to make it look more rugged and I think I will use this technique again in the future. And finally, a fun little bit of decoration, which is one of the enemy scout chained to a wooden frame while one of the soldiers is having some fun with throwing snowballs. Oh, and this battle right here is actually a switch to the lights used for the explosion in the wall. Ok guys, I think that covers every bit of detail that I've included in this mock, so let's jump into the outro of this video. So yeah, that is gonna wrap up this video. This is the end of building the Siege of Bricks and I hope you all like how the build turned out. It's been a crazy journey and overall a great experience for me. Partwise, it's my biggest build so far and I had a chance to test out some new building techniques and play around with a lot of small details, which is what I like the most about building mocks. I know that my channel has been gaining a lot of new viewers for the time of this building series and that is something that is going to keep me motivated even more further down the line. Showing you guys my build process is something that I really enjoy doing and I hope most of you like it as well. Usually you can't see what is going on behind the scenes and this types of video can help you guys understand how some elements are being made which is not always as simple as it looks. 
I also hope this build will inspire you to make some awesome creations yourself, because that is also what I really enjoy doing. After all, it's all about having fun and inspiring each other to make even better builds and sharing them all around the community. Now, as for the future of the mock itself and the channel as a whole, I will be releasing a cinematic video sometime next week, not only showing the stuff that you've already seen, but also combining it with a part of the build made by Edge of Bricks. If you've been watching my other mocks on this channel, you know that I like to make a slideshow video showing the highlights of each build, and this time it won't be just my build, but the whole collab that we made. Unfortunately, because of Covid, we weren't able to display the mocks next to each other, but I think I can still make something out of it virtually for you to enjoy. And then, the mock will have to be disassembled to make place for other creations that I will be making. I have a basic idea of what I want to do next, but I think I will keep it in the dark for a little bit more. I will probably make few teases on Instagram while I'll be ready to build it, so make sure you keep an eye out out there. Oh, and before that, I will be making the video tutorial for the Ballista, since many of you asked for it and it's such a cool design that I don't want to keep it to myself. So guys, that brings us to the closure of today's video. I hope you all enjoy what I have prepared for you. I know I had a blast building it and making this video, so thank you all once again, and I can't wait to hear your thoughts about this creation. Let me know what are your favorite parts of this mock in the comments down below and how did you enjoy the entirety of the series. With all that said, I hope to see you again on my channel. Leave a like if you want, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all again next time here on Cubebrick.